This is a chance of a lifetime for me. I have to take full advantage of it and prove to, to the public and, and, and to myself that listen, I can go to the next level. I belong to be the top echelon heavyweights. I can't afford to lose. I don't want to step back two steps. I want to step up two steps. This is an opportunity for the world to see what I have. And it couldn't be a better opponent. Couldn't be a better opponent. I'm a better fighter. He doesn't bring the talent I have. I know it can be. He doesn't bring the hand speed or foot speed. He's never fought anyone like me. It's going to be a knockout. I don't get paid overtime. <laughs> Versus Briggs is brought to you by Trump Hotels and Casino Resorts and by Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated king of beers. This Bud's for you. Pay-per-view distributed by Showtime Event Television. Tonight, we come to you from the world-renowned boardwalk of Atlantic City, New Jersey, famous for the Miss America pageant, saltwater taffy, and all-around summer fun. But the focus shifts to boxing here at the Trump Taj Mahal. A triple header coming your way with our featured attraction, a battle of heavyweights who have their sights set on sports' most coveted prize. And we're back in the Mark G. Edis Arena, a room we opened in 1990 with Thomas Hearns. This arena named in the memory of Donald Trump's close friend and colleague who died tragically 10 years ago. Capacity crowd for boxing, perhaps here tonight, they hope, over 5,000 settling in for a big night at the fights. Our main event will feature former IBF heavyweight champion Francois Botha, known as the White Buffalo. This is arrival earlier tonight. He enters the scene with hopes that a victory later will bring him closer to another world title opportunity. While he has won 39 of 41 fights, perhaps best known for his two losses as his stock went up in defeat against Mike Tyson and Michael Moore. Tonight, the South African native who now lives in Las Vegas in a career crossroads fight. But standing in his path is the man with the golden dreadlocks. Number seven heavyweight contender Shannon Briggs out of Brooklyn, New York, making his way into the arena earlier this evening. He took the boxing world by storm a couple of years ago when he upset former heavyweight champion George Foreman in a controversial majority decision. He hails from Brownsville, the same neighborhood that produced former champions Mike Tyson and Riddick Bowe. And looking to catapult himself back to another shot at the heavyweight crown. His only attempt, a loss to Lennox Lewis. Hello again, everybody. I'm Steve Albert. The heavyweight division is currently in a state of utter confusion. So much is up in the air. It appears now that Evander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis will ultimately get it on in the rematch. Mike Tyson, who comes off a questionable performance against Francois Botha, is preparing to announce his next fight, possibly within a few days. Will he ever return, though, to championship four? Then you've got the next generation, like Grant, Ibeabuchi, Tua, and Rahman. But their status seems to be on perpetual hold. Botha is here tonight by virtue of a loss, while we still wonder if Shannon Briggs, by all accounts a talented fighter, is championship material. He lost to Lennox Lewis, and many criticized his decision win over George Foreman. While so many issues in the heavyweight division remain unresolved, the winner of tonight's main event could very well place himself in title contention once again. And with that, let me bring on my ringside partners. Here's the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. And Ferdy, is there more pressure on Francois Botha to win here tonight? Well, I, absolutely, because he's at a plateau where if he doesn't win tonight, he goes over the edge into that abyss called uh, the um, trial horse. I mean, the, the contenders that never will make it. So with the scarce money, he has to win. He has to win here or his career is, for all intents and purposes, downhill. All right, we turn to our other partner, Bobby Chess. What about Shannon Briggs? A lot of folks think he's in line for a fight with Mike Tyson in the near future. Is he at risk tonight? Well, Steve, every time you set foot in the ring against another fighter, you put your future and your body at risk. But the risk to reward ratio here for Shannon Briggs tonight is nothing short of excellence. On paper, against both, it doesn't appear as if Shannon Briggs could lose. Skill for skill, he is the superior fighter. However, the intangibles, the things you can't put on paper and you can't measure, could be a big factor. But either way, Shannon Briggs has to win by definitive decision or by knockout if he wants to go on and do better things and brighten his future. All right, it's Botha versus Briggs later tonight in our main event. For more on that, let's check in with our Jim Gray. Jim? 
All right, thank you very much, Steve. Back in the dressing room with Francois, both the friends. How much have you been kicking yourself with that loss to Mike Tyson, that right hand, back on January 16th? Uh, constantly. I mean, I keep thinking about it. Um, you know, it's like a nightmare. But uh, you know, one thing about boxing, you gotta keep going on. You can't go and lie down. Now, you have said just yesterday to us that you feel that Briggs is a tougher opponent than Tyson. Why? I believe so because mainly of his, uh, his, uh, his size, his, uh, his height, and uh, he's a little bit faster than, than Tyson, and uh, he's not so predictable. I mean, uh, Mike's very predictable, and you know, stars make fights. I believe this is a different style, and uh, I believe it's, it'll be a little bit uh, tougher than Mike. Fran, should you lose this tonight, would it be virtually impossible for you to come back and get any kind of title shot? Oh, no, you know, I, I don't believe so. I believe that uh, I'm, as a fighter, I'm very much so in demand. Uh, I mean, event the Holyfield showed us uh, that, uh, you know, when people think you're finished, you came back and you won the heavyweight championship again. And, you know, uh, we'll, we'll just have to see. But I know that I gave myself a couple of more years of boxing and I'm going to do it all I can. And uh, hopefully I'll be, be a heavyweight champion again. Best of luck to you. We look forward to the fight. Thank you. All right, let's send it back now, back out to ringside and Steve Albert. All right, Jim, the always congenial Francois Botha. Tonight, our host venue, the Mark G. Edis Arena and the Trump Taj Mahal here in Atlantic City. Getting set to present a full evening of boxing. Let's give you a complete rundown of tonight. Two down and one to go in our boxing triple header. Coming up next, the main event, Botha versus Briggs. Former heavyweight champ Francois Botha takes on highly rated Shannon Briggs in a heavyweight bout with possible championship ramifications. Welcome back to the Trump Taj Mahal, the Mark Edis Arena, here in Atlantic City as we get ready for the main event, Shannon Briggs against Francois Botha. I'm Jim Gray. I'm now joined by the former heavyweight champion of the world, Larry Holmes. He was champion from 1978 to 1985, 48-0 before he lost to Michael Spinks, trying to beat Rocky Marciano's record. How do you see this fight tonight? In fact, they had asked you to fight both of them before. But how do you see Briggs and Botha? Well, I see a good fight. I tell you what, Shannon Briggs really impressed me with the fight with his for George Foreman. He was jabbing, he was moving, he didn't stand in one spot. And if he can do that tonight, I think he'll be successful. But again, Botha, you know, he's a plotter. He comes in wild, unaqueduct, and, you know, he can make a lot of mistakes. And those mistakes are not for him, they're for the other guy. So I think it's going to be a good fight tonight. Now, Larry, it's hard to believe you're going to be 50 years old here very shortly. And you've come up with kind of a novel idea. We've seen it go on, but you're the first to really propose a senior boxing league in which you would fight George Foreman as opposed to George fighting some of the other guys who are still much, much younger. How's that going, and do you think that this league will come off? Well, we, we're hoping that it does. Uh, I fought Bone Crusher Smith for that title. I won the title. We're hoping that we can bring George Foreman into the fold because, you know, Let's face it, George is 50, I'm, I'll be 50, and we're getting too old to be fighting these young guys. So therefore, I think that people who never got an opportunity to see George Foreman and I fight would love to see that fight because everywhere I go, every time I turn around, they want to know about George Foreman and I. So George should come on out and do this fight, you know, not ask for the sky because it's not going to be available for us. So, uh, you know, I'm willing to take my, my cuts or whatever I need to do to get a public what they want. All right, Larry, you're both great champions. Final prediction here tonight, uh, uh, Briggs and Botha. Well, you know, even though I was offered with, uh, uh, Botha by Sterling McPherson, I think Shannon Briggs is going to win the fight tonight. You and George Foreman, both great champions. Don't do it. You don't need it. Let's remember you what you were. Thanks, Larry. Good to thank see you. you. Back over to you, Steve. Okay, thank you very much, Jim Gray. We are closing in on the marquee matchup, a battle of heavyweights. Former IBF heavyweight champion Francois Botha set to square off with WBC number seven rated Shannon Briggs. While Francois Botha and Shannon Briggs have collectively compiled an impressive record of 70 wins and just four losses, this could be, and we underline could, the most important, most pivotal bout of their professional lives. For both these fighters entered tonight's contest at the crossroads of their careers. While the pre-fight festivities have been...
good sportsmanship and jocularity, Francois Botha and Shannon Briggs are keenly aware tonight's contest is not about fun and games, it's about survival. Coming off the most dramatic losses of their careers, each fighter knows a defeat tonight will forever jeopardize their chances for title shots and big money fights. I can't afford to lose. I don't want to step back two steps. I want to rather step up two steps. You're talking about two guys who been in there with the best, and now we're fighting to go back to the next level. So you're talking about pure hunger. No one believed the durable South African had the skills to beat the once self-proclaimed baddest man on the planet. No one, that is, except Francois Bote. I don't think I've seen Bote move this good in his entire career. He, he just seems to be avoiding everything Mike does. I knew he couldn't touch me. I knew, you know, it was easier than I thought it would be, and uh, it was easier than my sparring. He's toying with Tyson. Who ever thought we'd see this? And the crowd reacts. And loves it. I was winning easily, and uh, for, for a second, I lost all concentration and uh, walk right into the shot. Oh, a straight right hand, right and down goes Botha. That's all it took, one shot, it's over. Tiger Woods couldn't hit a golf ball better than Mike Tyson hit me. But you know, that's boxing. I'll be back, I'll be, you know, that's why this fight, you gotta have a good win to, to be, get back up there again. And I'm back at the crossroads again, you know, I was given the opportunity to fight for him and I took full advantage of it, I felt like. Then I got the Lewis fight. Um, unfortunately, I didn't go in my favor. Worried about his conditioning, Briggs surprised the pundits and Lennox Lewis by rigorously attacking the champion early. And there, Briggs almost knocks the champion down. Shannon Briggs believing he has hurt Lewis on the attack. He's been in tough fights before. He's been, he's been hurt before, so he took it well. He rebounded back. He hurt me. I was ready for a three or four round tough fight. Down goes but I wasn't ready for a 12-round green fight with a champion. He's getting up! The fight is controversial because the punch that they stopped the fight, I missed. I, I missed the punch, I fell to the ground, I got up, they stopped the fight. Yeah, I was tired, but I'm supposed to be tired. I'm in a fight. It's the heavyweight championship of the world. I felt like, you know, let him knock me out. Both combatants fully realize a loss tonight will dash their championship aspirations and remove them from the upper echelon of the heavyweight division. I can't afford to lose. I mean, there will be things down the road still for me, but you know, I can't afford to lose. What's next for Shannon Briggs? I don't want to take a step down. I don't feel like um, I should have to. He's well known. I'm pretty well known. Great, let's do it. Steve Albert along with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, Bobby Chez, back ringside here at the Mark G. Edis Arena in Atlantic City, New Jersey. We close in on our main event, Francois Botha versus Shannon Briggs, and we turn back to the fight doctor. And, Ferdy, is there any doubt that a victory tonight is vital to remain a heavyweight contender? Well, Botha loses, and he changes trainers, he changes diet, he changes altitude, he changes everything. Twice he's done that. You know, he's got to get the message. It's not the exterior things that count. It's him. He's got to change. Well, if he doesn't change tonight and he loses, then he goes back down those stairs to the corral labeled trial horses. And boy, down there, the money is cheap, and his big-time days are over. He's got to win tonight and win big. And we turn back to Bobby Chez. And, Bobby, what about Shannon Briggs? Not only does he have to win tonight, but he has to look good in winning, yes? Well, Steve, the only two times he stepped up to the upper echelon, George Foreman and Lennox Lewis, he didn't, you know, the Lennox Lewis fight, he clearly didn't finish, so he didn't win. A lot of people, including myself, thought he didn't beat George Foreman. So the only two times he stepped up to really be counted, he didn't make it. Tonight, he needs to step up again, and he needs to do it in impressive fashion. All right. How about your keys to victory for both fighters tonight? Let's start with Francois Both the first. The shorter fighter, slower fighter. He's got to close the gap and get inside. When he gets inside, he has to work that body and also straighten overhand rights. They're his signature punches. Here against Stanton, a bigger fighter, he's going to walk in, work in with two jabs and throw the, his signature punch, the big right hand. Hurts him, and as soon as he does, gets inside, he goes to the body, and he buckles Stanton and works. This is how he has to work against Briggs if he's going to win. He's got to back Briggs up, work his way inside. There's that body shot. He buckles him, and a sort of a right hand, a left hook, just to say, okay, take that with you, too. 
Shannon Briggs is the bigger of the fighters. He's got to use a sharp jab to set up all his combinations. The right hand over that lazy jab of Botha and dictate the pace. He's got to set the pace, come forward when he wants to and rest when he wants. Here against Valdez, you'll see he jab, jab, double jab, to throw a left hook, keeping the left hand out there, following with the big overhand looping right, getting Valdez in trouble. There's the jab, the hook off the jab, and another two, three jabs, and the big right hand, using that jab to set up that right hand. He goes back to the jab to set up the combination. He's got to work in behind that jab, Steve. It's ever so key to winning this fight. All right, Bobby, some final thoughts before the ring walks. This is a fight that neither Francois Botha or Shannon Briggs can afford to lose. The loser of this fight places his career in serious jeopardy, probably, as the fight doctor alluded to, going back to being an undercard fighter. As a result, it could make for an intriguing and competitive contest. We shall see. As we take a look at Shannon Briggs waiting in the wings, his two big high-profile fights up until now, a disputed majority decision over George Foreman to win the linear heavyweight title at 97. His next fight, he lost by fifth-round TKO to Lennox Lewis for the WBC heavyweight crown. Briggs' first title fight. After an eight-month layoff, he scored an easy first-round knockout over Marcus Road in December. His only other setback in 33 fights, aside from Lewis back in 96, he was knocked out in round three by Darrell Wilson after starting out with a record of 25-0. and 0. Bobby Chez. Well, you know what? Shannon Briggs has exactly all the tools. He has the height, the reach, the body, the speed, the power. The intangibles are the only things that are ever questioned. I think tonight we get to find out because Botha brings many of those intangibles to the table, and then we get to see. And you're talking, for the most part, about heart. Well, his heart and his chin, two things that are big in this business. If you don't have those at the top of the heavyweight division, you can forget about being a real contender. Botha contends that Briggs doesn't have heart. Well, we'll find out. Meanwhile, Briggs says Botha is too slow for him. And we'll find out that as well. Here is the White Buffalo, former IBF heavyweight champ. His marketability going up in defeat back in January, leading Mike Tyson on all... Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the magnificent Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City, New Jersey, for the featured bout of the evening. And it's all brought to you by Frank Warren Sports Network in association with Dylan Productions, Showtime Event Television, Cedric Kushner Promotions, Trump Hotels and Casino Resorts, and the undefeated, undisputed king of beers, Budweiser. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman is Jerry Gormley, board members Gary Shaw and Stephen Katz. Physicians at ringside, Dr. Dominic Coletta, Dr. Jordan Garrison, Dr. Ken Remsen, and Dr. Howard Taylor. Timekeepers at the bell this evening, Lindsay Tucker and Roosevelt Gilbert. Introducing to you our judges scoring this main event from ringside from Plainfield, New Jersey, Henry Grant. From Atlantic City, Joe Pasquale. From Longside, New Jersey, John Stewart. All right, fans, here we go. The time has come for our main event of the evening, a heavyweight special attraction scheduled for 10 rounds of boxing. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City, it's showtime. Introducing first our referee in charge of this bout, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Ed Cotton. 
Introducing to you, ladies and gentlemen, on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks with silver trim, representing Mark Roberts Worldwide Entertainment and Sports, and hailing from Brooklyn, New York. He weighed in at 230 pounds with a record of 31 wins, two losses. He has 25 big wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the WBC number seven ranked heavyweight contender, introducing the hard hitting Shannon Briggs. And his opponent across the ring on my right, ready to fight out of the red corner, wearing solid white trunks, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada. He weighed in at a ready 232 pounds. His fine record stands at 39 wins, two losses, one no contest with 24 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the former IBF heavyweight champion of the world, known as the White Buffalo, introducing Francois Botha. Once again, a referee in charge, Ed Cotton, now to give instructions, 10 rounds of main event boxing schedule. Boxers, you both received your instructions in the dressing room. Once again, let me remind you, there's no stand and eight count, there's no three knockdown rule. If a fighter gets knocked down, go to the furthest neutral corner, wait till I tell you to come out. Protect yourself at all times. Let's touch gloves. I expect a good, clean fight. Francois Botha, methodical, lulling style, allows himself to be hit, but does have a very good chin. He can be deceptive and heavy-handed. Shannon Briggs, whose average length of fights is just over three rounds, he told us not only does he have to win, but he has to look good. Says he's faster, stronger, he can box or slow. He's flashy, flashier dressed. Indeed. He's a, he's a vision. Ooh, look at that right hand to start. Shannon right Briggs hand. with a big overhand right. That, that is right his hand. bread and butter. Oh, yeah, over to jab, too. Look up both. He keeps that lazy left hand down. He is somewhat slow with it. That right hand is going to be one of the keys. He almost knocked Lennox Lewis down. That was with a short left hook in the first round. Well, they define who's going to be the offensive uh, fighter and who's going to be defensive one right off the bat. I mean, it's Shannon coming after it, coming to get it. And if Shannon Briggs wants to get by both and then fight Mike Tyson, he's going to have to fight a fight where he comes straight in and punches because that's the kind of fight that Mike Tyson likes. And both of them certainly stands there, waits for you to come in. He, there's no fancy footwork, no movement. He's going to stand there. If you come in, you can pop him. But you might get hit in exchange. Both of us very candid about the fact that he's got to work, wait the first three or four rounds and weather the storm. He knows Briggs is going to come out banging. Yeah, he says to win, I got to control the pace. I can't yeah, just apply yeah. pressure. I need a jab even while backing up. He said both the tries to be cute and he showboats. I got to stay right on top of him. See how smart a fighter he is. But both have said he's not going to showboat or be cute anymore. He was too careless against Mike Tyson. Both it does not have the range or the speed to win this fight going backwards. If he stays going backwards this whole fight, he can't win it. He's got those little short arms. He's got to come forward. He's got to come forward. He's got to get under the jab. He's got to get to the body. And he has to wear Briggs down with body shots. He has to attack the body, not the head, like others do against Briggs. Can't look for the knockout. Otherwise, you're vulnerable. The words of both of them. Briggs is much faster, and he should be flashing those hands in there right now. If he wants to take this, if he wants to show he's 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 the kind of guy that fights for the title, and he's got to come in with speed. He's got to come in with force. Bit of a chess match here in the opening round under a minute remaining. Round one scheduled for ten. Both is working behind a nice double jab and overhand right. Fairly effective. Not a lot of action right now. Except for that combination, the jab and then the overhand right by Briggs. Briggs showing that's the kind of charge we need. You need to charge the light brigade here. We need two, three jabs and then the good right hand and push inside. I mean, he's got to show energy. Both are certainly a good target. Not much movement for Briggs. 
Again, both is working in behind the double jab, hitting Briggs with a right hand on the side of his temple. And every time he's throwing that right hand, Briggs has counter like that with a right hand. Briggs is no question faster. He's got longer arms and he's got oh. the Oh, oh, nice right hand by Bota in counterpunch. I think Briggs was stepped on accidentally by Bota and yeah. lost his balance. The feet got tangled up, Steve. I saw that too, but I'll tell you what. <laughs> Briggs for his height reach should be more effective with the jab. That was that was still a good punch by Bota. It, it wasn't the cause, but it was a good punch. Find a very intelligent fight. More jabs, okay? More jabs. You find a very good fight. And as you get closer, you're going to be able to hit it with more with the right hand. See, a lot of times while you're rolling, I wish you would just take the step back and check, check it with the hook. You understand? When he's throwing the one, two, and you're trying to roll on all of them, I don't like it. Just try to take it. you got such reflex, just take a half a scoop back when he comes in and check it with the hook, okay? And We're so going to take a look at what appeared to be both the stinging Briggs, but I don't, it doesn't look like that right hand really was the thing that landed. It, it appeared to be more of the feet. From the overhead, let's look at the feet and see where they tangle. If, yeah, you know what? It wasn't a feet tangling. It was just Briggs off balance. I think he got hit. Bota's tricky when he comes in. He's got that tricky counter punch. And he's been hitting Briggs coming in, but not solidly except for that punch. Not a bad round for both men. I, I gave it to Briggs, but not a bad round for either one. Both are uh, coming out dangerously with left low Briggs uh, does have the sharp jab and a long reach and he's looking to take advantage nice right hand by Briggs he's you can see you can see the look in both his eyes it hurt but he smiled back just a nice little smirk let him know I'm still here despite his detractors Emmanuel Stewart says Briggs is more dangerous than people realize well the only one who's got to realize it is both of them. right now anyway nice jab Flick the head back of uh, Briggs. He's got to snap that jab out there. Has uh, both of. There's that snappy jab by Briggs. It's two in a row. Both of smiles at him. At least he's not talking to him like he did his last fight. Good right hand, sneaky right over the top by Briggs. See the things that both needs to do to get to Briggs. He not only is not doing, but he generally we've seen him over the past cannot do. Keep a good pace, tire Briggs out, make Briggs worry, keep the pressure on. He's never shown the ability to hold that type of pace, use that kind of energy and work that hard. Well, he's going to need it this time because that's the key to the victory. Pulling jab there, doing nothing for Botha. I don't think Botha intentionally wants to throw away the first three rounds waiting for this guy to get tired. I mean, I don't think that at all. There he is. He's fighting hard now. He's fighting a lot harder now. Is Botha. The later this goes, the better it gets, of course, for Briggs, because Botha has had a history of conditioning the problems. Well, this is the best condition I've seen him in. He's lost a lot of weight. You can see that what he calls baby fat is not there like it used to be. I call it a beer barrel, but, you know, it's not there. Well, he trained eight weeks at Big Bear. He went back to chopping wood, which he attributes uh, to his look right now. He's lost a little weight. It's, it's still a little on the uh, on the fleshy side there. He's still not a tone fighter, and, and it always makes me wonder about his diet. He's changed his diet four or five times. His trainers, his training technique, he's done a number of things differently. Said he lost his baby fat. He's 30 years old. I'm not sure how long baby fat hangs around. Well, he's he's saving saving everything for the fight, he says. He, he, in the past, he said he worked too hard in the gym under uh, Panama Lewis. No more Panama Lewis. Now he's Abel Sancho. You know, a great heavyweight, former heavyweight world champion who's in our audience tonight, Larry Holmes, never had the best physique. But what a fighter he was in his day. He right. still is. But he was huge. <laughs> he was a Woolworth builder. That guy was big. Oh, pretty good chance. You yeah, had to get in the ring with him to understand how big he was. Heading for the bell. Round two. There. Right hand over the top by Bolton. Hey! Good, good punches by both at the end. Deep breath. Deep breath. Once again. That's it. Okay. I gotta, I gotta have it right here. Don't worry. I just gotta have it right there. We're gonna lose. Okay, little grease. Little grease, Mario. Francois. 
Briggs came out to make a statement early in this round using that nice long jab and a straight right hand snapping both his head back got his attention immediately and then jabbing his way in later well there's a right hand and a sort of a left uppercut not using the jab to strip and at the very end there you don't have time to show it of course but at the very end Bosa got in some great ringing shots which uh, indicated the first that he landed in combination and hard punches that he landed round three things cranking up things are cranking up Bosa starting to punch hard with authority there you go yeah, yeah, just yeah. missed with that right hand, Botha. Good idea, though. It, it went right over his left and should have landed. Briggs immediately tied him up. He got Briggs' attention with a couple of with a left hand on the inside and, and one of the rights. Botha loading up, which uh, could be dangerous. Loading up with that right hand could open himself up on the uh, on the left side of his body for That's, a right by Briggs. This guy's going all out. Botha knows this is night, and he's got to look good. Beautiful triple jab by Botha. But no right hand or hook following. Yeah, that was a, a, a problem he had against uh, Mike Tyson, although he controlled the fight. It was a good left jab by Briggs. He didn't follow up. It was one and done. And again, one and done by both. Yeah, but, not, but nothing in return by the other guy. I mean, uh, he's got a good jab. That's what, what kept Moore at bay. That's what was winning the fight for him with Tyson. He's not doing bad. He's doing very good here. Briggs is much more effective. Excuse me, Shannon Briggs is much less effective in this round. Both are getting to him a little bit. Yeah, because both is doing the action. Both is leading. He's 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 letting. Those sound effects courtesy of uh, Francois Botha. And this is what the corner people scream. You first. You first. This is what you'll be screaming at, at uh, Briggs right now. Big round for Botha. Come on, you landed first. right hand. Very good frequency. Oh, there's a smacking left hook by Shannon Briggs. Sort of an off-balance shot, but it nailed both in the face. Almost lost his mouthpiece and nailed him good, but he came back. He's one of the bravest fighters you'll see, though, Francois Bolte. You could say nasty things about his skills. Oh, he's brave. He stands right in there, doesn't he? And this time, he lets loose for the combination. Not one and done. He hit Shannon with all three of those shots. That jab following. Shannon's defense is getting more suspect. Both have said George Foreman and him, he's slow. Now, George is also 6'4", but both are proving his point. And both are gaining confidence. Good block off that straight right by Brett. Both are doing the fighting right now. Oh, an overhand right. That caught the attention of Briggs. Briggs just covering up as Botha comes in instead of trying to counter. He's just covering up. So it's Botha piling up the points. And Briggs breathing heavily through the mouthpiece. Stop punching, stop punching, stop punching. Stop punching. Come on, stop punching behind him, okay? All right? You know, fight him clean. Wild miss there by Botha, but no counter punch by Briggs. Time! Good round for Botha. him that round. See, what you're doing, you're just doing exactly what I was worried about. You're, everything he's punching, you're going into all of these motions, and now he's starting to time you. You're not staying on, you're not staying on top of you. You're sort of working, staying back out here, boy, but, but you're going into this shit too much, and he's starting to time your bob and weave, and, so then, and you're not going after him at all. You're counter-punching, whether you know it or not. Yeah. And this guy doesn't hit you. If you notice when you throw at him, he don't counter-punch you that much. If you caught him over there with the hook over here, he doesn't counter-punch. He basically waits, waits, and he runs in with a one-two, and all you're doing is just sitting there trying to roll and roll, and he's timing you now. I don't want to see a white hook. I want to see an uppercut. Do that. Everything from the outside here. It's on the inside before Eddie breaks you up. I think I heard him say, uh, I want to see more of an uppercut. He said, before Eddie breaks you up, while you're in close, get that uppercut in there. More, more uppercuts, less hooks. That was Abel Sanchez to Francois Botha. You heard Emmanuel Stewart say, hey, Botha's not counterpunching. Take advantage. Well, Emmanuel Stewart's very, very smart, very honest. He said, you lost that round. I gave him that round. Right. And what he told him, too, was he's got to be the lead. Botha is not a good counterpuncher, not a good mover. But he's timing you. Starting to get your timing down. Combination to the head by Francois Botha. Watch out. 
He's starting to time his bob and weave, and therefore he's hitting him. Also, he's hitting him first, and the other guy's just ducking in and closing in the defensive procedure instead of counterpunching. Now, a little taunting by Bosa. That's not what you want to see. That's what he did against Tyson. Came back to haunt him. Brings a three to one favorite, in case you're wondering. But don't tell that to Francois Botha, who seems to be gaining confidence every minute. As long as he's doing the leading, he can win. Because the other guy doesn't seem to understand up, he's, Sam, he's got to mix it up with. He can't just fall in a defensive shell. Pounding overhand right off the top of the head by uh, uh, Shannon Briggs. But Botha's got a hard head. Bobby, what did Emmanuel Stewart mean when he said he's timing? He's well, what, what happens is this. Shannon Briggs is strictly counterpunching at one point, which is what Emmanuel Stewart is talking about. So when, look, when Francois both the punches, Shannon Briggs makes the same move to get out of the way. He's starting to time it. He throws a punch out of just to make that move. Big Briggs is hurting. He's got Briggs in a little bit of trouble. I don't know if he's in trouble, but he sure should be getting tired of getting hit because he got hit a lot. Some terrific shots there by Francois Botha, smiling at Shannon Briggs. Briggs looked a little dazed there for a moment, momentarily dazed. Stop him, stop him, stop him. He just stopped doing everything. Oh, he got hit a good collection of punches there. Wasn't just one or two. Oh, well, there's a terrific right hand by Bosa. Stop him, stop him, stop him. Right stop on the mark. Good job. Both is gonging him with those right hands. This fight can't go on like this forever with those right hand punches. That's going to take the toll. He cannot keep letting him land completely clean right hands. Both of them may be slow, but he is connecting with that right. First, he pulls out a, a, a left and then comes a right. If he ever throws a left hook after that, could be Katie bar the door. So far, Shannon Briggs is anything but impressive. This is not helping his stock, and again, it's helping both the stock. And those punches being blocked by both. Of them. A right hand counter punch that wasn't blocked by Francois Botha. That was beautiful. He blocked a couple, and as he, as he thought about throwing another one, he got hit. Biggs got hit with a big shot. Another you round, and they kept from You're getting Botha. in front of him. You haven't caught it, but you're waiting. You're ahead, letting him get out too much. You don't realize it. Yeah. You can't have no damn close fight, brother. Yeah. Ain't on you. You know, you got to look after that formula. You ain't can't take it. You here, we're going to see Francois both, okay? Here, here's the thing. There's no gap here. He has closed the gap. He's going to come in tight with a right hand here. Then he's going to shoot the left hand up here, and then he's going to continue and follow his man, chase him back. As we roll the tape, you watch the right hand sneak around. Here comes the left hand on the inside, and he stays with his man. He closed the gap behind the jab, got in, worked his opponent, and landed cleanly on Shannon Briggs. An entire combination, beautiful right hand, left hook, and some follow up shots. This is what he needs to do. Later in the round, Bolick still landing that big right hand. He's timing Shannon Briggs' is lean, and Shannon Briggs is not getting out of the way. He paid attention to that pawing jab and leaning in, so if the right hand lands. That's what that's what they tell him. That's what Emmanuel Stewart is telling him. You're letting this guy time you. Briggs frustrated comes out with a purpose to begin round five but then he and he lets off one of the keys to victory uh, we told you for Volta was to connect with the big right hand he's been doing that thus far with regularity now you can remember that Volta oh nice combination of the head by Briggs his best flurry he threw a nice big right hand here Stephen he should have followed it up he should have taken a look and a feel to see if Volta was hurt and if he had something there the window and the door the opportunity will only open so much yeah, in that case, they open and shut in a hurry. Uh, remember, remember that, that Bolta has a history of doing really good at the beginning and then getting dog tired. And sometimes you see him wearily take a big deep breath right now, and it's only, what, the fifth round. So it's about this time we start looking to see if signs of getting weary. For both of them. Mindful. Nice right hand to the body by both. Be mindful that both guys have lost by knockout in this round, the fifth round, both of the Tyson and breaks to Lewis. 
Rodriguez better do something right now. He's, he's certainly not winning this fight, nor is he impressing anybody. He's winning this round, though. He's coming out, yeah. trying to make a statement, trying to re reverse the tide. Bobby, we're at the middle of the round. <laughs> we got a long way to go to the end of that. Meanwhile, a good sneaky right hand applied by Botha to the face of Briggs. Now, both are trying to set up the right with a double left jab. There, there it is. is. Right there. You could see it coming, Steve. You were talking about it while it was on the way. Ed Cotton getting into the face of Potha, telling him to stop punching when he says break. When he says stop punching, he means stop punching. A whacking left hook off the side of the face. Back no. comes Potha with a combination. And they keep landing that right hand. He's landing. Bridge fires some wild shots, yeah, wasted he was a lot missing. of energy. He was missing. Stop punching, stop punching. Let's go, Ineffective stop punches Thank by you, Briggs. Oh, no. There's oh, all yeah. a very effective combination oh, no. to the head oh. by Botha. Oh. Now he goes downstairs for the body. Stop punching, stop punching, stop out. Man, I don't know what, what in the world uh, Biggs has got in his, oh. in his, uh, Briggs has got in his oh. jaw. Overhand right by Botha that scored again to the jaw of Briggs. It's amazing to me with what appears oh. to be not very quick right oh. hand. Both uh, opened himself up. He faked the right. He stood still like a statue, and he ate one. And he, really he ate a good one too, Steve. And he ate a big one. Oh, stop, 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 Not a good stop, move stop, by both. He should have followed up. through. Yeah. Okay. Good job. Good job. Well, that's a tough one. You can't stop in the middle. Of it. Deep breath. Now, you give me the left hook that I want, but I haven't seen the uppercut. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Relax. Deep breath. Little grease. Deep breath. Here you go, Mario. Both are teeing off with that right hand. He's just getting through. There, one to the body. Work his way on the inside. I think he tries to jam a little uppercut in here, too. But he's been landing that right hand so regularly, it, it's just incredible. There was a nice feint. Shannon Briggs fainted. Briggs, excuse me, both have stopped in his tracks, and Shannon hit him with a nice right uppercut. And that's the first thing they said to him when he got back in the corner. He said, don't stop a punch in mid-arc. That's when you're going to get hit. And that's what happened. Well, we're halfway through. How about some unofficial oh. scores? Well, I got stop it very close. Break, break. Both ahead, 48 to 47 by mine. I have the same way. Three rounds to two. Uh, both have made a nice little run there and oh. put together some, oh. you know, a few rounds of good punching. Good job. Oh. I tell you what, he's found gold with his right hand. It's but you know what? Look at him. He's stop getting stop tired, him. guys. Yeah, he's huffing and puffing. He's getting very sluggish. That's what I'm telling you from the last round. This is the time that he that he fades. Five. That's that's when he faded with uh, Tyson, and that's how he used it with Moore. I mean, Botha is not a guy that's got a big iron constitution. You yeah. saw the online scoring there, and uh, Botha coming into this fight saying, "Hey, I just, it's a short fight, relatively short. I want to get as many rounds in the bank as Brick starts to come back, but not for long." Or both it does look exhausted. Both Just fighters have a reputation too of having a small gas tank. Straight right hand gas. by Shannon Briggs to the chin of Francois Botha. Briggs looking more effective here now all of a sudden. Botha slowed down. Every once in a while he gets one off, but Briggs is scoring more. But back comes Botha. Nice right hand. Nice right hand and left hook. But you know what? It's going to come down to those quick punches that Briggs will throw. The tap, 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 like that. Both has got the counter and start working again. He's running out of steam. Yeah, all of a sudden the gas tank getting low for Francois Botha. He has had energy problems as fights have worn off. We're on. Perfect time for a body shot. I was just thinking Shannon went downstairs but didn't connect. He's he's taking the round off is Botha because oh come off on. the top right. of the head. Goes Briggs. Stop her, stop her, stop her, stop her. Good job, good job, good job, folks. Thank you. Very polite referee. Oh. Oh. Great right hand by Botha. That that set Briggs oh. back. Oh. Missed with that stop one. Her, stop one, stop one. Good you job. saw Shannon like Briggs look to his corner, looking a little bit frustrated. I know he's upset that he got hit with both oh. of those right hands. He looks sheepish. He looks oh. like, like saying, oh, I, I shouldn't have gotten hot. Sorry. Well, just when you think both is in trouble, he comes back. We've seen that. Many times. Look, he's just toying with the left. 
nails him with the right and then hugs him. Both of them. Both of them, when he wants to be in action, is taking the, this fight. There it is again. Overhand right. right hand again. By Francois Botha, and again, scoring effectively. Now the left jab. I, I hesitate to think what he could do if he throw a, a left hook after that right hand. When he, once he throws the right hand, he's through. Tough as he is, you've got to imagine if this guy could ever get in real shape. I what he could he actually do. I think his body style is that. I mean, he can go so far. Right even, even if, well, let's just throw the body style out and the body shape. What he's able to do in performance. Oh, what a wild man. Oh. And Botha counters with an overhand right. That right, really scored. Right on the button. What a careless maneuver by Briggs, and he paid for it. Wow. Inside the rope, Bobby Chen. Francois both the right now, if he is winning this fight, which I think he is, is with this. Jab, jab, right hand. Another right hand. Counter right hand on the inside. Right hand in a look. That right hand is finding such a home. There's a double right hand. One to the body. Another one to the chin. Followed up with another one in the left hand. That right hand is winning the fight for him if he is indeed winning on the judges' scorecard. Well, for any... Look Watch at that this. spin. That's a full pirouette. And another right hand following the spin. And that put a period on the pirouette. Say, that's ballet. This here is boxing. Briggs looking to hit it on one punch with a home run left there, but left himself wide open just before the bell, and he really paid the price. Well, are we in for another both the night, folks? We're both the guts everything up and then finally loses in the end <laughs> are we in for one of those nights or is he got enough gas to go to 12 here and, you know 10. this, in sorry, this particular 10. fight it could go both ways both fighters have a reputation for fading getting tired and not being able to close the big one well now we have two that don't close the big one it'll probably be a draw <laughs> both his average don't length say that, of Bobby. fights oh, gosh, don't say just under five rounds briggs average length of fights just over three and we're now in round seven that's what Briggs needs to do, that jab. There's almost no way for both to offset that jab if he keeps using it. All right, break! Get out, get out, get out, good job, good job. Good I think job. It's nice when, job. when Botha comes in with that hard jab, Briggs turns his face and when he, uh, turns his face away to receive the jab. That's when he gets hit with the right hand. He doesn't seem to be able to keep his eye on the right hand. Just like he that, just did he did it. it again. He did it again. Watch him, watch when the left comes. He turns his head away. That's he's completely open to the right. He can't see it. There's a left jab by Briggs, got in there. Botha oh, oh. did get not counter. An overhand right oh, continues to oh. pick left for Francois Botha. Then he nailed him with a left hook, a short left hook. Got he, he doesn't normally throw the left hook. Look how effective it is if you got the left hook behind that right hand. Boy, the left hook is the one to paint you. Now he goes to the body again to the chin. A right hook there by a Francois Botha to the face of Briggs. It's Botha all the way right now. Both of them on a roll. Shannon Briggs' legs just now for the first time didn't look like they were under him as well as they should be. Those body shots probably contributing to that. And now shots to the head by Botha. He's just wearing Briggs out. Well, body shots. Botha, Botha chopped a lot of wood, and he's chopping wood tonight. This has strengthened him, and he is going at it. We soon may be yelling timber. Briggs has been down three times in his career, both the twice. An abrasion above the right eye of both of who just nailed Briggs with a right cross. Right on the jaw. And uppercuts inside as his corner was telling him to do. Low blow. A cut over the left eye. Briggs, oh, a straight right hand by both the right on the nose. Briggs is in a little trouble now. Yeah, Br Briggs is a little rocky. Briggs is rocky. Briggs is dazed. Both that just wants it more. And we talked about the intangibles. Skill factor, Shannon Briggs. Seven seconds to go in the round. Guts, heart, nerve. Who wants it more right now? Francois Botha. He's making a statement. No wow. question. That's a good, good round for Botha. As this fight heats up. Hold on. 
Shannon, nuts and guts now. You got to sit down and fight something. Fight? You fight yet? No, no, me. You're this man that's walking through you right now. That's almost a man. Ten, eight round. You're not fighting. Francois both on it right here. He comes in behind a jab and that right hand every time. He just keeps on throwing it to Shannon Briggs as he closes the gap behind that jab. We should roll the tape. He comes in behind that jab and that right hand is right there. There's the jab. Bang. Right hand on the button. Closes the gap. He's on the inside. He's got to be the more effective man on the inside. What a good job he's doing. Later in the round for pretty much the whole round. Both are loading up with the right hand. There's the jab and the right hand right over. Shannon Briggs not making any adjustments whatsoever. Manuel Stewart's giving him the right advice in the corner. He just cannot do it. I need it now. Big sense of urgency in the Briggs corner as we enter round eight. Stick and move, they're hollering at him. Stick and move. Well, he better do something. We can't just stand there and keep hitting, getting hit by both of them. There, there it is again, the overhand right, another one. You know, against Tyson, you could see both are using a jab and a long range right hand against a guy bigger than him, faster than him, with longer reach. You never would think it, but he's using similar style to get the job done. Briggs missing with that combination. A very hungry Francois Botha. There's a wild miss again with that left hook by Briggs. Come on, hands free. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Beautiful jab by Shannon Briggs. You may recall Shannon Briggs missed with one of those wild lefts against Lennox Lewis. Got knocked down and he blamed it on that. Shannon Briggs like right now, vu. Steve, right now, Shannon Briggs is sucking it up. Oh, oh. Mando Store told him, you can't you lose this round. Get I got to have this round. And Shannon Briggs is going out there and showing that he's got what it takes well, to at least give it his best. He said it's all about guts right now. I clean that up for you. Well, he, he has been getting gone. Get out, get out, Bobby, he's getting get gone. Get he's out, trying. And, and the two good punches he threw, he missed both of them. They looked good, but they didn't land. And Botha just walked into oh. the left, but he hammers him with a right. Both hands free, hands free. into the Let's face go. of Briggs. The right hand is landing with such frequency, it's almost ridiculous. I can't understand. I cannot understand why Shannon Briggs doesn't have that left hand high and make a different move. It's the same move. He moves to his right hand side, and all both has to do is make a slight adjustment, and he lands it. Briggs is confused. He's frustrated, and he's tired. Those are not, that's not a good combination in boxing. And he's not. There goes the mouthpiece. Out of Briggs, and that proves that he's tired. When you lose the mouthpiece, Well, it might be both his mouthpiece. It was both as both is the one who pointed to it. Both of needs a little bit more of a rest than Briggs. But he's the one that's more effective, even though he's starting now. There's blood streaking down the left side of both his face. He's doing this on look at this. But he's, he's coming back strong. He senses it too. He's doing it on sheer guts. He's tired, he's exhausted, he's not the more skilled of the two, but he wants it more, and he's tougher. He's and to, he believes in himself more, Steve. Trying to wipe the blood out of his left eye is both of them. He's bleeding, as you said, on both sides of the face. You talk about heart and guts. Francois both has got him. Boy, he is becoming a fan favorite. He is pawing at that eye. He could just... There's a straight right hand by Briggs. He's best punch. 11 and both is down. It's a knockdown. It's another both of night. Seven. Eight. Yeah, here we go again. It's another both of night. He needs 20 seconds to survive. And Briggs is trying to end it right here. In round eight. It's All again. Over. It's again, it's a, it's, a, it's a matter of fatigue. Eddie Cotton looking closely. He's got enough time. Ten seconds. He hasn't got any time. He Boca got any with time. no energy. Hanging in there. It's all hard. Boom! What resolve by Francois Boca. Take a look at that knockdown. Shannon Briggs sensing the need to do something, make a statement, gets a nice right hand. He hurts both of both, goes back to the ropes and walks right into a straight, excuse me, a left hook. It's another angle. Here's the left and then the right. That's the right hand that starts things. Now watch his left hand. Right there, that left hand, he came off the ropes right into the left hand. He was hurt. 
I think this knockdown was a combination of a couple of good punches by Shannon Briggs as well as Bolta's fatigue. Bolta will never be able to fight 10 or 12 rounds at a great pace. He just doesn't have it for whatever the reason. It's another Bolta night. Bolta down for the third time in his career versus Moore in the 11th round twice and now here. Bolta looks like he's going to fall down right now. He hasn't been hit yet. Francois Botha looking like a beaten fighter. You wouldn't know that he's been winning decisively up to this point. Up until that point, I had a 68-65. Yeah. Now I have a 76-75. Exactly. Botha's still ahead by one point. Exactly. Exactly what I have. But we're in, we're in New Jersey, and Briggs is from Jersey. I wouldn't trust that score. Uh, Brooklyn, close enough. If you're, if he lives here, he lives here in West Orange. If you're a fighter, if you're Francois Botha, what do you do now? Do you try to stay away from Briggs and try to win it on the cards, or do you go forward like Abel Sanchez tells him? He has to go forward. He has no choice, but he doesn't have the energy. He cannot. A straight right hand by Botha. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. He cannot keep the pace that was necessary to win this fight. If he kept the pace he was keeping, you saw what he was oh. doing. That was one of my keys too. You had to land that right hand, get inside, work there. Straight right hand by Botha. He's coming back. Let's go. Get out, get out, get out. This is going to be one of those fights where in, in a loss, he's clevering himself with glory. Again. Again. Get out, get out, get out. Three fights, he loses three fights. The public loves him. Well, he hasn't lost go. yet. He hasn't, he hasn't lost, lost yet. yet. It's oh. boxing. Left by Briggs that scored right on the face of Botha. Left hook by Briggs. Botha back to the body with the right. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. If Briggs doesn't put him away now, then, then, the, then the market value on Briggs is down. Get out, get because out, this guy out, is a out, shot and beaten out, fighter out, right in front of him right now. He knocked down Botha in the eighth round. Things look very bleak for the former IBF heavyweight champ. But now he's let him off the hook, as it appears. And Briggs walked into another right hand. The steam isn't on the right hands anymore, the way it was. But Briggs is just walking the but, right but hand after right hand. It stops him from punching, Bobby, and those seconds oh, oh. are ticking away. We're inside of one minute. All he's got to do is survive this minute and get his gas back into the tank. Well, well Briggs may have underestimated the heart, the guts, the will, and the determination of the South African. He, he should have gone after him all, 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 fire, all guns firing. There's no reason for him to let both off the hook. None. Low blow there on the right uppercut by both of them. You all right? All right? Let's go. All that time the talking is going. Seconds are ticking by. Seconds to save both of them. Well, I'll tell you what, this fight works out to be a very funny thing. Briggs' stock can't go up being tested and beaten for the majority of the fight the way he has. Stop punching, stop Bolta punching. Yeah, running out of complete gas late in the fight. The stock can't go up, but he could be a very worthwhile opponent for some of the other fighters. Only one round remaining after this. Oh, nice right hand. Get right in front of him, you stop, and then you wait until he finish. It's too late. Get your shit out first. You understand? Shannon, just let your hands Get your punches out first. You get there, you let him get out first. You got to win this round, brother. Your whole fucking run. career is in three goddamn minutes here now. Just and you said that, you get right to it and you stop. Then wait up. You got nothing to lose here. Don't do anything. Come on. He'll carry you out, my friend. He'll carry you out there. Deep breath. You understand? Hell of a fight. You're winning the fight. Get your business. 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 Dramatic stuff in the corner of Shannon Briggs. Okay. Desperation Go. time for Briggs. And survival time for both of them. I have it 85-85, guys. This round is the deciding factor on my unofficial scorecard. The last round could decide the future for these two heavyweights. Round 10. This is the round for their careers. We've seen a very good heavyweight fight here. And I, I must say, while that's nice hype, I, I can't agree uh, completely because both guys oh, both guys have covered themselves they're fighting another overhand right that scores for both both is you know what i think 
I'll tell you what, I think I right now, I think both are wants it more. I think Shannon has more. What what a way this has to lay out. Stop her, stop her, stop her, stop her. Again, the right uppercut by both a little low. Cut at the corner of Briggs' right eye continues. And he continues to be first, both. If the other guy could just, Briggs could just get his punches off. If he could just land something hard, Botha is so exhausted. And yet, Botha is first. That's guts. That's hard. Get out, That's get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Don't That's him. willpower. And look at the eyes of Botha. Bloody. But he continues to land with There's that right, the That's overhand that. right. That has been his punch. Get out, get out, get out. All night long. Halfway through the last round. Does Briggs have what it takes? Briggs' eye is bleeding. Get out, get out, His get left out, eye is bleeding. I think Briggs has more in the tank. I think Briggs has more skills. I think there's no question that Francois Botha is the braver man who wants some more. Look at that combination. Big finish here for Botha. Determination. Who wants to win? Who will not lose? Botha. Oh, what a powerful overhand right by Botha. Right on the face of Briggs. And the crowd going wild. Stop it, stop it. One minute remaining. Another straight right hand by Botha. He continues to score. Let's go. Get up. Get up. Look at the blood on the face of Briggs. Another right by Botha. And again. Look at the ears bleeding now. Even his ear is bleeding now. The left ear of Briggs is in a pool of blood. Stop it. Stop it. We approach the final 30 seconds of the final round. What a strong finish by Botha. All over Briggs, landing repeatedly with the overhand right. There's a straight right hand right on the nose. And Briggs is dazed. He can barely stand. Botha continues to land. 15 seconds to go. It's Francois Botha's night. Briggs misses with a wild left. Five seconds to go. They embrace in the center of the ring, and this one is over. That's what carried that 10th round. That's what makes boxing such a great sport. The he was hungrier. You talk about, Steve, that we can't put on paper. Boy. Hey, ha, ha, ha. My unofficial scorecard was 95-93. I gave the last round a two-point round for both of them. He beat him, him from pillar to post. He dominated the entire round, bloodied him, hammered him at will, staggered him at least six times. I gave him a two-point round. Even, even, even without that, he wins the fight. In both my, in my both I have it 96, 94, and I, I would be hard pressed to think anybody thought that anybody but both of won this fight. If we get one of those stinkers, oh brother. Or if we get a draw, that would be brutal. Well, even if we got a draw, the winner is both the, as far as public opinion is concerned, and the loser is definitely Briggs. So we await the decision. A very worried look on the face of Shannon Briggs. I'm a betting man. We're in New Jersey. The powers that be play the game. You watch this fight to draw, guys. You really think so? Well, they did it with Olivia Lewis, and that was more one-sided. I just well, have, that, have yeah. that feeling. That would be a gift it for do, Shannon Briggs. It doesn't feel good, but I have that feeling. Well, we'll see how long it well, takes. For once, I hope you're wrong, Bobby. For once, I hope you're wrong. Okay. What? We'll give it our best shot. Okay. Here we go. Let's go up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the decision. <laughs> Ladies says. and gentlemen, before I read the score totals, we've all seen an outstanding 10 rounds of action. Both of our fighters deserve recognition. Great fight, Shannon Briggs, Francois Bocard.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing here at the Trump Taj Mahal, we go to the scorecards. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Joseph Pasquale scores about 95 to 92. Francois Botha. <laughs> Judges at ringside, Eugene Grant and John Stewart both score about 94, 94, a draw. The decision is a majority draw. All right, I, I tell you what, I actually hate myself for being right. I, I hate you for being right, and I hate me for being wrong, but that, damn it, you're right. That is highway robbery. That is a stinker of a call. Well, Francois Bobby Cotha won that fight. All right, Bobby, call it. Let's, let's, let's say it like it is. Bobby lives in New Jersey. He knows what he's talking about. This was a smeller. One judge had it 95-92, Botha, and the other two had it 94-94. The look of uh, disappointment, understandably, on the face of Botha. Let's go up to Jim Gray in the ring right now, who will be talking to both fighters. Jim? All right, thank you very much. Uh, Francois Botha, what did you think of this decision? It seemed to me, and at least to the fans here at ringside, that you won the fight. Well, I thought I won, you know, but uh, I'm not going to take much away from Shannon. He's a great fighter. And, uh, you know, I, I don't dark fighter, so Shannon, good fight. Are you surprised with this decision? Yes, I am, but, you know, boxing is like that. I knew that I was fighting Shannon in his hometown. But, you know, boxing is like that. You can go either way. You know, you don't know how the judges score a fight. We have fighters in the ring. Think what we, that we're doing a good job and winning. But, you know, at the end of the day, our lives and is in the hands of the judges, and, and we got to recite by that. Let me ask Shannon real quick. Are you surprised with this decision? It seems to most observers here that you lost this fight. Well, it was a close fight. The knockdown kind of helped me put me back in the fight. You know, um, me fighting at home, the crowd was definitely behind me, but I, I underestimated him, I can't lie. Well, I'll be honest with you, not even that, because I trained very, very hard. It's just, you know what, it's the ring rust. Do you feel that you won? Um, yeah, I feel like it was a, no, I, actually, I feel like it was a draw. You know, I feel like it was a draw, but at the same time, the ring rust, not fighting eight months, and the guy I did fight eight months ago was a first round knockout. I think that's the first time I've ever heard a fighter tell me they thought that they tied someone else. Yeah, well, I thought it was really close. I thought, you know, me being at home, I would have the edge and have the morale behind me. But this guy is so tough. He took some hell of a shots. KG boxer, a KG boxer, most underrated fighter that I fought, right, black, whatever, green. Tough fighter. Your total inability tonight, Shannon, to stop his overhand right. Why? Um, not really. Not looking for one punch. Looking for one punch. Wanting to knock him out. You know, I figured he never fought any tight any punches beside Tyson Amora, so I could knock him out. But I don't underestimated him. Tough guy. KG fighter. Did some sick things. Definitely a heavyweight to reckon with for sure. Let's start with you, Francois. Where does this leave you? What next? Is this a rematch? You want a rematch? Well, I, I, yeah. If I say rematch, you know, it's okay with me. If it's okay with Shannon. Uh, I think that's just basically a setback for you. It is because, you know, I, I really don't have to prove myself. I think that the public, the public know what, what happened and they, they can make the decision. Uh, I just go back to what I, was, what I know how to do and that's fighting. And I try to do the best I can. And if it means fight great fighters like Shannon Briggs, I don't dog nobody, I don't hide from nobody, I fight everybody. I usually don't invoke God, but what in God's name would you want a rematch for? Because um, I, I think that I could beat him, um, honestly. Tough fight, don't get me wrong, it won't be an easy fight. But again, I was making my mistakes. It wasn't really him, it was me. Ring Ross, um, not really being, being stupid. Do you want to fight him again? Yeah, I would love to fight him again. I, really, I would like Tyson, to be honest with you. But, you know, hey, listen, I would like Tyson, to be honest with you, but I'd fight him again. He's a good guy, he's been nice to me, he's managed everybody, he's promoter. No, 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 nothing wrong with him. You benefit by being here in New Jersey, a lot of people are going to say that as well. Um, no, nah, I don't think so. I think the knockdown, I was controlling him a little bit. It was back and forth, some very close rounds. But again, those last rounds, he was throwing that right hand from down south, and he was catching me with it. He's a tough fighter, strong, very underrated fighter, tough guy. All right. Thank you, Shannon. Hey, Appreciate thank you. Thank you. All right, Steve, that's it from up here. Back down to you. All right. Uh, very interesting stuff. Thank you very much, uh, Jim Gray. Here's how the folks at home saw it on the online scoring. And how about that? They, uh, they had both ahead convincingly seven rounds to three. Wow, and the, the judges again here, Henry Grant and John Stewart had it even at 94. Joe Pasquale had both ahead 95-92. Two judges gave both a 10-8 10th round, so had he not won that round that convincingly on the scorecards of two judges, he would have lost the fight. 
Another gift for Shannon Briggs. We saw it with George Foreman in many minds, and now we see it here. I think even though it wasn't a victory and it was a draw, it was a hometown decision for Shannon Briggs. Let's take a look with the telestrator, Bobby Chez. Well, certainly the turning point in the fight for Shannon Briggs just put him back. He works his way in behind the jab here. He's working both the back. He, he gets both to slide along the ropes here, and he hits him with a beautiful straight right hand. Then he gets him in real trouble after that. As we roll the tape, you'll see him work in, and he bangs both uh, very well. There's the jab, and then he misses that right hand. But as he gets him over, that's the right hand that works. Now over here, he walks into that left hand where it bounces off the ropes into it, and that's more than he can handle. He has to leave his feet for a little rest. That saved the fight for Shannon Briggs, at least on these judges' scorecards. Well, what can you say? Both uh, departing. Disappointed that he did not get the victory, but in the minds, I think, of most people, in the court of public opinion, as they say, uh, Ferdy Pacheco, Francois Botha is victorious. Well, it's not the worst decision I ever saw in my life. I can't uh, scream and holler about that. I do believe that he won, and won in convincing fashion. What I do believe is this. I don't believe Botha lost anything here. I think he won. Whether they gave it to him, whether they didn't give it to him, he won. Because what we were looking at was a guy that came in strong and dominated when he needed to dominate, especially that last round. When he needed it, he went for it, he got it. What more can you ask from poor Botha? He's back in the hunt. Now, let me ask you something. Would you like to see, I don't think Briggs would like to see it, but would you <laughs> like to see a rematch? Oh, absolutely. That was a barn burner good heavyweight fight. Listen, you don't get that much better. And uh, it, they deserve to fight again. And either one off this should fight Tyson, although I would say both have deserved a lot more than the other guy. I mean, Briggs did not cover himself with glory, and that he squeaked by here with a draw isn't what he had in mind when he came in here. So he's the loser tonight. The winner tonight is both of no matter what the score says. All right, uh, let's turn back to uh, Bobby Chez here. Where, where does this leave? Uh, Shannon Briggs, a very exciting fight. I think most people disappointed by the decision, but uh, that doesn't take away from the, the electricity here. The electricity is here. The excitement was here. The fight was a great fight. They both showed that they can give and take with the best of them. Shannon Briggs took a lot of right hands. It didn't go down. Showed that maybe he does have a better team than people think, but some are still going to question his heart because both are more tired, both are more fatigued, both the, without the natural skills and abilities just sucked it up and wanted it just wanted it more one of those intangibles that you can't put on paper that you can't define all right Bobby a, a tremendous fight indeed but uh, one that will go in the books I think with an asterisk no question about it. Uh, similar to George, George Foreman fight with Briggs and some of the number of the fights even with uh, both in Schultz a number of the fights were, were close this one was not a runaway robbery but uh, I still think that the statement was made by both the uh, and I can't say it any other way. I had more respect in this draw for both of them than I've had the whole entire time I've watched them fight and win and lose. Okay. Well, as we wind things down, let's take a look at tonight's results from right here in Atlantic City. Omar Shika took care of business against Kevin Pompey. Time to step up the quality of opposition, uh, perhaps even a title shot. How about WBO champ Joe Calzaghi? And in a stinker, Marco Antonio Barrera retained his WBO Junior Featherweight title, beating relatively unknown Pastor Marin, who was very awkward, unorthodox, and elusive. Could title unification be next? How about Eric Morales? And in our main event, a very exciting fight with a most questionable decision. It wound up a draw between Francois Botha and Shannon Briggs. And once again, Francois Botha's stock goes up even though he didn't win. But in the minds of most people, I think, who saw this fight, he did. More World Championship action coming away on Showtime in two weeks. On Saturday, August 21st, we'll present a much-anticipated bout between interim WBC super lightweight champion Costa Zou and number one contender Miguel Angel Gonzalez for the vacant crown. Catch this exciting action from Miami, Florida on Showtime Championship Boxing Saturday, August 21st at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. Well, that'll do it from the Mark G. Edis Arena in the Trump Taj Mahal for the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, Bobby Chez, Jim Gray, our entire crew, Steve Albert saying so long from Atlantic City.
Botha vs. Briggs has been brought to you by Trump Hotels and Casino Resorts and by Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated king of beers. This Bud's for you. Pay-per-view distributed by Showtime Event Television.